you can pretty much just sit back and find something for everyone in the Shenandoah Valley. It's very rich, rich in agricultural history. It's rich in military history. It's rich in natural resources. It's rich in cultural resources, like the Shenandoah National Park. About an hour and a half west of Washington, D.C., you'll find Virginia's Shenandoah Valley, nestled between the Appalachian Mountains. How best to experience the Shenandoah Valley? Get above it, not in a plane, but in your car. The Skyline Drive parallels the valley for more than 100 miles. It is, in a word, spectacular. Skyline Drive travels the crest of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Shenandoah National Park. The Skyline Drive construction began in 1931. It was constructed by contractors. Many people actually think it was constructed by the CCC. It was actually done under contract, and once the park was established, that's when the CCC actually came in and did the overlooks and the rock walls. We have 75 overlooks along Skyline Drive, affording gorgeous vistas of the valley and the Piedmont to the east. And on really, really clear days, it's, we know that you can see the Washington Monument from certain places along Skyline Drive. Established in 1935, the park's creation wasn't without controversy. These hills were taken by eminent domain, displacing hundreds of families during the Great Depression. One community that survived was Skyland Resort on Stony Man Mountain. This area in 1886 was actually owned by a group of men who had copper mines. One of the sons, a George Pollock, came up to the area to look for taxidermy. He took one look around, forgot all about taxidermy, and said this would make a great resort. They came up here originally and actually lived in tents, but George provided the amenities. They actually had the restaurant, took you on hikes, overnights, and that's really how Stony Man Camp at Skyland began. Skyland Resort continues as one of the most popular places to stay within the park. What's really awesome about Shenandoah National Park is how many people come back. I've heard it's anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of the visitation are actually repeat visitors. We've got everything. The natural beauty of the Shenandoah Valley isn't just above ground. Beneath the valley there lies a honeycomb of caves, including Luray Caverns, the most famous. This is the largest and most beautiful cavern in the east, eastern United States. We have about a half a million visitors a year. What separates this cave from other caves around here is the enormity of the rooms. We have some rooms that are pushing 70 feet tall, chambers that are 90 feet in circumference, formations that are the height of these 70 foot tall rooms. The beauty of this cave far surpasses the beauty of most caves because of the sheer size of it. One highlight is the stalactite organ, called the world's largest musical instrument. This unique organ strikes stalactites with electric mallets to produce an interterrestrial sound. That instrument is over three acres in size, which is a world record. To be here and to hear those sounds, is, people come here just to hear that. It's quite an amazing instrument. The Ray Caverns is a jewel to this country. It really is. The Shenandoah Valley was formed during the Ice Age by the river of the same name. It was once a vital commercial route, linking the valley with the Potomac River Basin. Today, sadly, the Shenandoah is one of the 10 most endangered rivers in the United States. The environmental group American Rivers claims the waterway is facing an onslaught of overdevelopment that threatens clean water. A couple of years ago, we did have a big fish kill on the river and we lost 80% of the mature bass on the river. The state of Virginia launched a, uh, a task force to investigate it. Uh, they've been investigating for two years now and just haven't come up with any answers as to why that took place. But last year, in 2006, the fishing rebounded remarkably. So um, uh, we're hopeful that uh, 
Uh, it was uh, just a one-time phenomenon. John Gibson owns Downriver Canoe Company in Bentonville. This is my office, so um, uh, this is what I, I have to look at every day, and I, I want you to know that I appreciate it every single day. People come here to our headquarters, leave their vehicle here, we drive them up the river, put them in, and let them float back down the river and finish back here at our headquarters. It's more like a western river. It has a gravelly bottom, averages about three feet in depth, and uh, the water's normally crystal clear, so you can see the bottom just about everywhere. Little gravel bars here and there. Uh, nice places to stop along the way, since this area was never developed very much. A lot of the land is still owned by the um, federal government, by the uh, National Forest. So about 40% of the west bank of the river is National Forest. So in coming down the river, you can, there are a number of places where you can stop and picnic and uh, camp and uh, just relax on the way coming down the river. Especially in the spring this time of year, it's uh, a lovely time of year to be here. It is indeed. And back to the Luray Caverns. They are open and visitors love to take photographs of Dream Lake, a 2,500 square foot body of water that acts as a reflecting pool.